folks, how are you today? Again, Greg Rich, Director of Marketing here at Guillermo Winery. Welcome back for our monthly newsletter, Winemaker News. This is the August newsletter. And I uh, just want to thank you for your participation and viewing of the prior uh, Oak Trials Part 3. You know, this is a really great opportunity for you to see that part of the winemaking process. And we started with the measurement, we went to the nose, and we went to the palate. So you got the whole process that we go through for just the oak part. Uh, there's one more part you're going to learn today, when and if you need to find a wine. More on that in a little bit. So today's event will actually uh, be in two parts. You're actually going to go out in the vineyard with George Guillermo, uh, the oldest brother and winemaker here, and he's going to give you a little bit of background information on the Grignolino grape. As always, I'd like to go over a few upcoming events, of course. August 12th through 14th is the San Jose Jazz Festival and we are the primary wine sponsor for that event. Uh, we'll have four booths, we'll be tasting our tray label, we'll be tasting our private reserve label as well. And they're doing something different this year for us. We're gonna have our own special booth right at the main stage, and it's gonna be the private reserve lounge, where we're gonna be uh, exclusively pouring the private reserve label. So you can look forward to that. If you're a San Jose Jazz Festival fan, come and visit and taste our wines. If you haven't been, you gotta go. Then the following weekend, August 20th, is our 20th anniversary Harvest Festival. Now, those of you who have been to Harvest Festival, you already know. No words can explain what this event is like. For those of you who haven't been, it is a day of fun. We have lots of great food. Uh, we do these silly games in the afternoon. There's lots of great wine. Uh, we have a band. You know, you got all the wine. And then we have a, a competitive Grape stop, and it's only it's only limited to like nine teams, and these teams compete to be the overall winner of the grape stop, and it's a volume measurement thing in a certain period of time, and everybody gets a commemorative apron for whoever participates in the event. So it's a lot of fun. If you want tickets, just call the winery 408-779-2145. Ask for the tasting room. Purchase your ticket tickets right from the tasting room. And with that, I think I've covered all the events. You know what's going to happen. So let's go out in the vineyard. Hello, my name is George Guglielmo and welcome to this segment. Um, we're here today to talk a little bit about Grenolino. We wanted to bring you to the vineyard and uh, it is almost the beginning of August. So I wanted to show you the development of this particular grape in the field as it is today. Uh, Grenolino is not an extensively large varietal in, in, in California. It is uh, grown uh, primarily in the north um, eastern part of Italy where my grandfather is from, the Piemonte area. And even in California there's probably less than 100 acres of granulino. Well I wanted to bring you into the field to see where this grape stands right now. Um, we're looking at a cluster here that is just starting to, to impact and tighten up. We're getting a little bit of verasion which is the, basically the coloring of the grapes. So uh, we're still quite a ways away from from harvesting these grapes, but this kind of gives you the idea of where and where they are today. Um, um, we'll produce uh, some Grenolino Red, and today we're going to work with a uh, 2009 vintage, I believe it is. Alan's going to take you through a fining process uh, where we'll take this wine and, and make it more palatable for you, and that's uh, where we are today. Thank you. All right, so now you just spent some time with, with George out in the vineyard, looking at the uh, vines and the Brignolino and seeing what a fine crop we've got developing out there. And, study, and he began to explain that now we're, the next step in this process is to further fine the wine, right? And that's going to be this step here with Alan. You all remember Alan now. So um, why don't you go from there? Why, why are we doing the fine? So what fining is, is adding some type of an agent to the wine that's going to change the quality of the wine. Uh, fining can change the texture of the wine, it can change the clarity of the wine, uh, depending on what fining agents you use. Today we're going to use a, a, a protein fining agent, and that's an egg white. Um, there are lots of different protein fining agents, egg white being one of them, um, casein being another, um, casein coming from milk, al albumin, which is the protein in egg, that's the, uh, protein in the egg white, that's what we're going to be using today. Um, other fining agents that are protein-like are gelatin. Uh, gelatin would be a fining agent for really um, 
intense finding. Gelatin tends to really pull out a lot of the characters in wine, let's say a very harsh tannic wine, you would use gelatin to pull out those tannins. Now, what we have here in our Grignolino today is a very soft tannin that we're just trying to take the edge off of a little bit. And that's why we're using egg whites. What the finding does is it's, it's, it's like magnets. Um, a finding agent has a particular polarity, like a magnet has a north and a south. Um, a finding agent acts, and relative to wine, acts much the same way. In this particular instance, the egg white we're going to be using today has a positive charge. The tannin that we're going to try to uh, uh, pull out of the wine has a negative charge, so the two will have an affinity for each other. What will end up happening is they will combine and then drop out and form a sediment on the bottom of the barrel. And it should only take about a week or so to do this. So let's just dive right into uh, making our, our, our finding. What we're going to do is we're actually going to make a slurry or a, a, a solution. Because if we just take this egg white and throw it right in the barrel, it's really thick. It'll probably just glop right down the bottom of the barrel and won't do anything that we want it to do. So what we're going to do is this is, this is the part of uh, winemaking that becomes baking where we actually separate the egg white from the uh, yolk. And I'll see if I can do that. Uh, is, now, you, there are preparations of egg whites that are, that are uh, freeze-dried, they're powdered. But apparently they don't work quite as efficiently as fresh eggs. So before I got to work this morning, I stopped at my local market and I got myself some egg whites, or some eggs, of which I will remove the whites. Now we determined a couple of weeks ago that we needed to do this with the wine. Um, Ellen put a trial together where uh, we had a control Grignolino, mm -hmm. and uh, although we liked the taste and the profile of the Grignolino, totally neutral out of the barrel, um, there were some, you know, rather uh, apparent tannins that we said, you know, if we soften this just a little bit, it's just going to make for a finer wine. And Absolutely. So that's why we're doing this today. And what's interesting about Green Yolino, um, it, it, what makes it unique is the fact that it is a fairly, fairly tannic wine. If, if you look at it in sort of, of the red wine spectrum, as you look at the intensity of the color, a lot of times in your mind you'll think to yourself, oh, dark wine's going to be big, it's going to be heavy. Light wine is going to be light, it's not going to have that, that grip that a bigger red wine will have. Well, Green Yolino tends to be relatively light. And so, um, so when you look at it, you think to yourself, oh, it's going to be kind of a lighter style. But in fact, it has quite a lot of tannin in it. And part of the name, Grignolino, part of that name in Italian actually means many pips. And a pip is another name for a seed. So th th these grapes have an excess of seeds in them. So when you actually ferment these wines, you get a lot more um, tannin into the wine. So you have to kind of manage that. We're managing it, at the, part of it at the back end here, we're almost to bottling. But we also manage it at the front end when we ferment this wine, we actually try to remove some of those seeds during fermentation to minimize that impact. Now, we don't want to push it out of its varietal. I mean, that's the nature of the varietal is to be tannic, but we also want to make it drinkable. So if, there's a sort of a happy medium there between tannin and um, uh, varietal uh, typicity. So on with the, the little cool. blend here. So we've, we've successfully separated our egg. So what we're going to do now, we're going to add a little bit of distilled water to it. And again, this is just to uh, loosen up that, uh, that, that really viscous egg white. We're going to make it a much a more uh, fluid solution so that when we actually mix it in the barrel, it will go into solution. It'll disperse. And then we also use just a little bit of table salt. And this helps break up that, uh, break up that egg white. Oh, okay. a little touch. More of that chemistry thing. Exactly. So we would just stir this. Uh, you know, it actually quite, takes quite some time to get that egg white to go into solution. So this is another solution I made earlier today. Um, what we're going to be finding with, or what I didn't say before, is actually how much we're going to be finding. What we're adding to these barrels today is six egg whites. That's not very much. And there's a whole range of finding that you would do. And it's, what's surprising with finding is uh, you'll taste something and you'll think to yourself, oh, I really need to, to, to go after this or I don't really need to go after this, but when you start doing your trials, you find that as soon as you start adding your finding agents, things start changing pretty immediately. And so you have to decide, like anything you ever add to a wine, how much you're willing to lose for how much you're willing to gain. And so what we're actually adding here, again, it's only six egg whites. The, we have nine barrels of wine we're treating today. That's not even a whole egg white per barrel. And that pitcher is going to do all these barrels? This is actually, this is half of it. I made, I made the lot, okay. I broke the lot in two pieces. So this is half of our solution. This will treat, a, you know, a, what is it, a four and a half four of our barrels. barrels. So um, That's pretty amazing that, that just this little bit will have that great effect on what is what, uh, 25 cases of wine. It's, it's quite profound. It's, it, and what we were finding when we were doing this trial is that we would see the tannins start to diminish.
started at, at, at uh, 50 parts per million. So what is that? 50 parts per million. That's 50 milligrams uh, per liter. So to give it some 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 metrics to plug out plug onto that, that's almost nothing. It's a really small amount. But as soon as we started adding it, we started our increment. I believe we started at 50, 100 parts per million, 150, 200, 250, 300. Once we got past 100 parts per million, the wine started to fall apart. You know, it started to pull out those really interesting nuances to give the wine its complexity. So we said, let's go with 100 because that gives us that, that tan tannin refinement we're looking for, yet it still retains the complexity. And that's where we kind of landed in the middle. And then look at the range, 50 to 300. So it's, 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 it's really interesting when you're working with finding agents, how little you actually need to achieve the results you want without costing you too much. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this guy and just kind of give a little agitation. And what we're going to do is measure off 250 milliliters. Oh, you're not just going to eyeball it, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, there's that science again. <laughs> now, t you know, I suppose you actually could do that. You could just kind of wing it and just, you, know, you could throw all this in two barrels. And then you could blend that back in with the rest of the lot and it'll all kind of end up the same. But oh. that's kind of, you know, I'm going to be a little more specific about it. There so. you go. All right, so we've got our 250 milliliters. That's just the way you do things here. Now we have... We've got our mixing wand here. This is our little barrel wand. And we're going to shove this down inside of a barrel, and then we're going to add our material, and we're just going to mix. And it's as simple as that. So I will start right here. Oops. We've got our single lone barrel here, actually. And that will help us keep track of this here. Do you want me to hold that? Okay. So what we're going to do is introduce the wand, stand off to the side, and kind of get some motion going, get the wine moving. Just kind of do a little counterclockwise motion here. Greg, would you like to come on over and do the honors? Sure. That's it. There you go, sir. It's a funny thing, Greg, you, you mentioned trials earlier. You know, you, when, once you get it all down here and, and you're actually doing the process, it doesn't look like much. But what you don't see is all the all the work that goes into this. All the you know, this wasn't the only thing we trialed. Right, right. right. You know, you're trying to. You know, you, you know, typically we try to leave our wines alone as, as much as we can, but there are those situations where, you know what, if I did this just a little bit this direction, I could make it that much better and people would like it that much more. And it would make it that much more accessible too, because not everybody likes to age their wines for 100 years. Right. You know, some people like to buy it and drink it. And, and <laughs> one of the reasons why we find is to allow wines a greater accessibility sooner on. But we also are just looking for refinement. And the neat thing about using egg whites is it's such a natural product. Right. So it's, and then we're just going to bung it up and leave it alone. And it's just going to settle over time. We'll rack it off, which means we will actually draw the liquid out, all the wine off, out of the barrel. And behind what we'll have is this little pink layer of uh, sediment where the egg white actually bound with those tannins and drops them out to the bottom of the barrel. And then this wine is probably going to be bottled in about the next month or so, and it'll be ready for sale in probably about two, three months. What's really fun about this particular lot of Grignolino is we haven't made a red Grignolino in probably five years. So this is actually the reintroduction right. of our Grignolino. What we previously we've been uh, back in the 70s. That's when all, most of our Grignolino production went into rosé, and then rosé sort of fell out of vogue, and we stopped doing that. And we actually shifted the Grignolino into a red production. And then back in uh, oh gosh, mid two, in the mid 2000s, we decided to shift gears and re-release a rosé. And uh, we've been doing that since about 2006, I think. And then uh, what we realized is we had enough Grignolino from the field to do. Both. So that's kind of fun in the cellar or in the, in the tasting room because now, once we release this, folks are going to be able to taste the red, the red Grignolino, uh, this, first, this, this red Grignolino, and then the Rosatello. All the but it's always kind of fun to see where, what you can do with the exact same grape from the exact same field, depending on how you identify it. Here's the, here's the, the Grignolino as a red one. By the way, taste that Grignolino as a rosé and tell us what you think about that. And I think we'll have success in that. So that's about it, right? We got a wrap on it today. That's it. Sure. Great. Thanks for joining us once again. And uh, we're going to come up with something completely different for September. So a little different shift this time in August. And we're going to do more fun things and get outside more and things of that nature. Do we, we have fun today? We always have we fun. We always have fun. That's what I'm saying. All right. Adios, everyone. Bye-bye.